Welcome back to You're Not Gonna Like This. This is the first episode of season three, and I'd like to welcome y'all back to the show. It's been a long time, no see, man. You know, it's been a couple months and we have been, we've been working, we've been figuring out how we can make this experience and this podcast better. As you can see, um, I got a couple familiar faces, but I got a, got a new guy in the top right on my screen for me. And, you know, I'm, we're going to go ahead and introduce him, and then we're going to get into everybody else and see what we got going on here for season three. Um, you know, obviously, this your boy I, I rug, I money, whatever you choose to call me, I don't care. That is what it is. You know, I'm back, been here since the beginning. So, you know, PJ, you know, since me and PJ been doing this since August of last year. Um, so we've been rocking, but Malcolm... Vontae, this is y'all first, you know, Malcolm, he's been here for a couple months now, but y'all officially part of the, you're not going to like this, y'all kicking it off from start to finish now, so y'all got anything y'all want to tell the people, man? Uh, my name Vontae, um, big sports guy, uh, like talking about sports, but also like engaging in like other types of conversations, so, you know, hopefully this podcast, you'll be able to hear some of my, my thoughts, my opinions on a lot of these things, and you know, just trying to give a different perspective on and things and then hope just to enlighten you all. So, yeah. And I'm just glad to be here. I'm ready to get into it, man. And I'll just keep keeping on strong, pushing forward. That's 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 how I feel about it. And that's what we do. We push it forward. As you can see, as we have built from episode one to now episode 32, our topics have gotten more expansive, we have more guests. But I received a request from a lot of people. They want just us, the host, the regular people. They just want us. They don't want no guests. They just want us. So I figured let's find some topics where we just don't need a guest. We can really just be ourselves and rock out. So today's topic is HBCU versus PWI. And man, look, if you get on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you go, this is a very, very popular topic. You know, if you're black and go to a PWI, you're considered a sellout. I don't know why, but that is how it's deemed. And I guess, I don't know if you go to an HBCU, I guess you, you sometimes people think you could have chose better, you could have made a better decision for yourself, or you just just trying to be around black people all the time. But we, we're going to divide we're gonna get into this and figure out does it really matter what school you really choose i think i personally think it doesn't matter because at the end of the day we're all getting degrees and good secondary education that can you know help us succeed in our respective lives but i guess that's not good enough so we're gonna have to figure out what is good enough so my first question for everybody is why has there been an uprising the hbcu movement i'll start that well first uh I've, I think there's been like an uprise in HBCU and a movement because I think from just the outside, I, so I went to a PWI, right? I think we all uh, went to George Mason. And at one point I did, like, as I was making my college decisions, like I really did want to go to an HBCU. Um, Howard was one of the choices I had on my list in a couple of other schools. Um, and it wasn't really the fact that I, I didn't want to go, like I wanted to go, but I felt there were certain opportunities that, you know, I could get at, I could get at George Mason um, at that time because I feel like in 2015 when I went into college versus now, um, there is a difference in experience in the sense of what HB, what HB, HBCUs has to offer now versus when I was coming out of high school. Like, no, this is, it's a six-year difference. But the reason why I think now there's been such an uprise is I think people are starting to value like having that black experience a lot more um, in the sense of just being around your people, that sense of community. Like, I feel like um, there's like, for me, like I didn't come from a, a black high school or whatever. I came from a, a diversity, a, a, a diverse high school. Like I was around different cultures. So when I was making my college decision, like I prided myself on diversity and things like that. But I think now, it's just the fact of being around your people. There are certain conversations that you have. There are certain changes that you can make because I, I think, as we all know, HBCUs are, are, I wouldn't say struggling, but they're not 
in a place that, you know, people want them to be. There's certain pros and cons and all that other type of stuff that, you know, people want to change. So I think, you know, that's why a lot of people are like starting to go there so they can make those changes for people to come after us. But I, but that's kind of a question, like even myself, I feel like, why has there been such an uprising? We can even start, even if we transition into like the, the sports aspect of it as well, I think we're starting to see a push for, a push for uh, top athletes to go there as well um, so that they could make a change and, you know, start something new instead of going to like a lot of these PWIs where, you know, you're getting offered the best. But, you know, I heard on one podcast, I think it was I'm an athlete where, you know, they talked about how athletes, if these kids go to these schools and make a change, you know, there's, you know, then there's like people that will follow them after and, and continue to grow the HBCU experience. Because it's, it is an experience to go to HBCU. There's certain things that you get, certain things that you, you know, you miss out on if you go to a PWI. So I think it's a lot of combination, a combo of factors that's planned into this HBCU movement as of late. Um, so I guess I'll go. I say HBCU just need more exposure at the end of the day. Oh, they just need more exposure? Okay, so, but my question to that is, and Bonte said it with the, as well, is I want to know, so, we are well, not everybody went to Mason. Malcolm went to Bridgewater, and now he goes to uh, historically black college in North Carolina Central for his masters. But um, uh, all of us for our undergrad, you know, black people are everywhere though. So, how come you feel like we can't get the black experience anywhere? Because at Mason, you know, especially we have the Black Student Alliance, we have black fraternities, we have black organizations, we have diverse organizations, we had ODOM. A Caribbean organization. We had a lot of organizations that focused on highlighting, you know, all different cultures, not just our culture, you know, Asian culture, any any culture you can name. We had it all at George Mason. So black people everywhere. So how how do you feel like why can't we still go to PWI and still not get the black experience? I think there's just something missing that a PWI doesn't provide. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something missing. Like there's a pride for like when you talk to HBCU graduates, like, there's a sense of pride that they have. Like, if you talk to somebody from Hampton, you know, there's a sense of pride. Like, yo, I went to a, I went to Hampton. Like, that's my school. Like, I don't know. Because I don't go to, like, I don't I, I don't go to HBCU. I, I never went, so I don't know. But from talking to people who do, there's, like, a sense of pride. There's a experience that you just don't get. And also, on the flip side, too, there's an experience that you just don't get at a PWI as well. Like, there are certain things that you just don't get at a PWI. So, from my perspective, looking at it, it's, People, there, there's just certain things that you just don't get that I, as like a black student that you really wish you could get at it, that, that you really wish a PWI could make up for, but there's certain things that you just don't get. That's from what I look at it, but I don't know. Like, I, I wish we had an HBCU student, like somebody who went to undergrad, it's because there are certain things that, there are certain experiences that they get, and I wish I could speak on it, but I just can't, so... Um. Um, sheesh, dude. Since you are, since you do go to HBCU for your master's, do you? Do you but like, I, it's it's completely it's, different with the master's degree experience and the undergrad experience. But still, like I said, I still had to proc. Uh, well, not exactly proctor, but um, oversee. Well, I guess yeah, proctors, undergrads, exams, or TA for their class and everything. And um, it's a big fucking difference, I must say. Um. I went to bridge, keep in mind, my undergrad wasn't as large as y'all's. Uh, my my students, I mean, we literally had, how much was my graduating class? Probably like 3,000 students. So, um, you know, coming from Bridgewater, Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley to Durham, North Carolina was already a shock for myself. But as far as the PWI, uh, PWIs have a larger, um, a larger endowment. Um, they're generally their alumni do give back to the school. And I think not only is it, uh, is it a best, I don't know. Is it a best bet? I'm not going to say that. Um, as we know, PWIs get most money, but not only because their endowments are normally larger, but because alumni give back to, they say, yes, I want to give UVA, Virginia Tech some money. They got the old money. Uh, when it comes to HBCU, HBCUs, it's like, um, I don't know what it was for me, and I'm just speaking for experience. It's kind of like, you know how we say in um, us as Black people, like we like to hold each other back? Seemingly a HBCU, I feel like a lot of people go there for the wrong 
reason. So people get there to get deep into Black Greek life. Not saying anything's wrong with that. You know, the parties are dope. Homecoming is awesome. The bands is everything. But as far as being taken seriously academically, HBCUs are looked down upon. Now, of course, we got the Howard, we got the Spelman, but I mean, and we talked about, and I think you said, you know, we look at the degree. I mean, any person looking at a job, a, a degree will say, okay, he went to Central, he went to, uh, let me think, not Hampton, I'm trying to think of another one, A&T, A&T is good though, or even Livingston College, a smaller HBC a pool college. Um, that's going to look different than a UVA. That's going to look different than a UNC Chapel Hill. And um, and another thing I learned, too, for me personally, I was asking myself, because the reason that took me down to Central is because I wanted that, uh, that the Black experience. But then I asked myself an important question. Why am I at a school that doesn't reflect real-world demographics? Why am I... Why did I want to go to a safe space if I know the world is not necessarily a safe space for me to be in? Practical. I mean, like, of course, because a lot of people go are drawn to HBCUs and throw their back, fliss, back black fists and wear their, wear their locks and, you know, they see the Omegas and the Kappas jumping. You know what I'm saying? Jumping in the party. But I ask myself, why? Why? This doesn't, this is a, this is a dream, a utopia at best, because when I get out into the real world, Ain't no institution gonna look like this shit. That's just me, though. You know when you when you when you say question. Oh, okay, okay yeah. Uh, I want I want to get my two cents. I want to get my two cents. Oh yeah. But why 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 is there been an uprising in the HBCU movement? Oh shit! Did I? Oh, I, you you answered. Why has there been? It no, was, was saying, it's a, it's, so a, it's, a, it's a lead off question. However, it's been, you don't yeah. gotta answer about a book though. It's a lead off. It's just something to get the juice from. So PJ, go ahead. I would, I would say because HBCUs have been getting more exposure as of late because everything that's going on in the world, from social justice movements to um, all these instances of police brutality, is it, bringing the community together in a sense that black people don't always want to do what what the white people are doing. They want to do what their own thing. You see, mm -hmm. um, the athletes like Vontae mentioned in the sports world. You see. High school athletes bringing attention to the fact that, oh, HBCUs need love, too. You see Mike and Williams talking about how he would commit to HBCU. You see um, Master P's kids commit to HBCU. You see Deion Sanders ready to coach at, like, coaching at HBCU. You see all this attention being brought to these institutions that Black people are saying, okay, maybe I want to do this instead of going to the traditional PWI. You know, even though all of us went to a PWI, there's a lot more, there wasn't as much exposure to those opportunities back then as there is now. Because, I mean, you, me and you, Ira came in 2017, Vontae, I don't know where you came in, that was before us, and Malcolm was probably even before us. So, um, back then, they weren't being talked about like that. So, I think it's been uprising because of what's going on in the world, and people are starting to embrace their culture, their blackness uh, all over again. I, I, a lot of times, I wish that I would have chosen the, the HBC route just because you know, it, it would be good to go to school and everybody looks like you. Everybody knows what you're going through. Everybody is paying attention to what the problems are in the Black community rather than, you know, it being ignored by every other culture that's at a PWI, you feel me? So I think that's the reason there's been an uprise. Uh, that's probably the most logical reason because everybody's starting to embrace their culture and their Blackness. So, yeah. Yeah, and I would say, like, for me, from my experience, too, like, like even on Twitter, like, social media, like, you can... <laughs> Like, there is a sense of, like, taking what's mine, like, owning what's mine. Um, I think we go to HBC, you feel like, okay, yes, when yes, when people look at me, okay, cool, you go to a Harry, you go to a Hampton, you go to a Burr House. Or even if you go to these, like, these small HBCUs, I think when you're having these conversations with these different type of people that's in these higher positions, I think you can stand out a little bit more. Um, I think you can speak on certain things that – someone who goes to a, a UVA might not be able to speak on. Um, because whoever's in that in those positions that when we're talking and getting an interview, you can you can talk about how like you can talk about certain things that somebody at a PWI can't. Um how those conversations would turn out, um, it's really up to you and and how you speak about it. But I think now like with like PJ said with everything's going on, I feel like people are now from, I would say, even from, like, 2016 to now, 
probably 2017, really, I feel like we're starting to see a lot more people in taking pride of being black. And I'm not saying people haven't, but I think there's an uprising in being black. Like, this is mine. Like, and we could go, that's a whole different conversation of what's ours and what's not. But people are like feeling that sense of pride and taking control of that and running with it. And, you know, if even tying it back to Africa, like I said before, sooner or later, it's going to be a change where we're, we're going to start to see athletes committing to these HBCUs and what that's going to be that what that, that's going to do a whole different thing not only for the sports world but also HBCUs in general that's just going to bring so much more exposure because it these top athletes coming to these big schools that's just going to bring so much more so much more power so much more money into these schools that people see it's just going to go it's going to, it's, it's going to something that's going to go crazy and I think that that's the reason why, and I think you know people are starting to take control of what's theirs and and taking on like, yo, this is mine. Like I'm at HBCU, and who knows? Some people may go to HBCU for the wrong reason, but I think once you get to an HBCU and you realize like what it is, and you find your niche, you find your your like what's yours and and how you can fit in, you can you can go the distance with it. And those conversations about the degree you have and all that, that that those conversations are going to be different when you're sitting in front of HR and all the people that interview and stuff like that. Because now you could talk on why you decided to go there and, you know, people, oh, you went to NCCU or and the conversation, I, could, I, could, I feel like the conversation would just be a lot different. You know, Malcolm made an interesting point. It was like, why did you choose it? You know, asking himself why. And what I was thinking about saying is that when my mother talks about HBCUs, she thinks uh, HBCUs are sometimes a false sense of reality being that like Malcolm said, in the real world, I'm never going to see everywhere I go just black people. That's, that's, well, that, that doesn't exist, especially me living in D.C. now. Not a thing. Not a thing. Not a thing. I'm not just going around and see black people all day, every day. I don't I don't live in an area that's demographically black. I live in a diverse demographic area. Like, I, I see Asian people. I see Hispanic people. I see white people. I see black people. I see every ethnicity you can think of. I see it in D.C. because, you know, D.C. is a very multicultural place. And, you know, I feel like what P.J. said and what Vaughn said, what everybody said, it's an uprising because of the social justice movement and everybody wanted to take more pride in being Black. Like Vaughn said, not saying that people haven't been, but I just feel as if everybody's taking that step. Like, okay, we always talk about let's help Black people. What are we really to really do to help Black people? And now being that the movement of... I could say, I would say the George Floyd killing was the domino effect and all of this. Seeing that, seeing that happen and the way it happened and Breonna Taylor being added on top of that, I feel like those are the two dominoes that really pushed this, that really pushed this to get going because they was like, okay, I see that the country, they, I think people, it just clicked that. Everybody, it clicked immediately for everybody from that point. I see that the country is not going to help us. They're not going to help us get better and actually, you know, improve what black power black people are seeing in, in America as a whole. So I figured and then I think everybody said, you know what? We're gonna do it ourselves. We're gonna we're gonna bring we're gonna bring more love to the HBCUs, you know. Big thing I remember saying this way back in episode two. Um, um I remember I talked about the organizations that were created in response to what happened, you know, more than a vote created by Carmelo, Chris uh, Carmelo, D Wade and Chris Paul. I mean, no, that's the bronze thing. The bronze is more than the vote. Um, so the social change fund, excuse me, is Melo, CP, and uh, Dwayne Wade. They all they they create those two, you know, to get more than the vote. Obviously, to help more black people to start voting and social change fund to donate money to black causes, HBCUs, you know, black organizations that are responsible for helping minorities and communities. You know, that's what they're for. You know, with the and then that trickle down effect has led to top possible prospects like Michael Williams saying, you know what, if I go to HBCU, you know people will come see me play and I'm, it's going to bring a lot of money in, especially, you know, when you have a, a, a caliber athlete like that because, you know, Michael Williams, he's one of the best basketball players in the nation. You know he's going to the NBA. So, you know, everybody's going to be in the front row seat to see that man play when it comes time to play. And I personally think it's great, you know. It's, I feel like I feel like we're overdue for the credit that we deserve. We've, we you know, black people did a lot for, black people did a lot for the country as a whole, and it goes unrecognized more than that. It goes unrecognized, but it's good. I think it's good, you know. 
it's nice. I like again, like I said, I ain't never been to HBCU, so I don't really know what the black experience is. I don't know what have I been missing a lot, or I don't know what goes on in the HBCU. But overall, I do think it's good. I'm not gonna completely say that I wish I would have chosen HBCU because my major and what I do, I can't just pick a college and be like, okay, I just wanna go and be an HBCU. I gotta really like, okay. Like I do, I, I'm in the health, I'm in the health field. So I gotta really like narrow it down and be like, okay, what school is really gonna put me on the track to success? And that, and at that time when I went to selecting my schools, it was like there was no HBCU that had athletic training or kinesiology or anything like that at a high enough rate to be like, okay, when I get out of school, I'm ready to enter the career field. Whew. But in recent news, um you know, we'll be trying, uprising has been going on, but, you know, everybody voted for Joe Biden, you know, he's president now, everybody's voted for him, but recently, um, Joe Biden came from your Lift Every Voice and Sing plan, where it was a strictly a plan for helping the Black community, and recently, um, his $45 billion budget for HBCUs was cut to $2 billion, and that's, that's pretty much it, so do anybody, do, do y'all have any does it, does it raise a red flag? Do you feel like it's going against what we what is trying to happen? Do you how do you feel about it as a whole with the just the whole cutting of funding for something as important as I guess this is? Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, bro, Joe Biden is from Delaware. You know what they call Delaware? The Mississippi of the North. I, I mean, Mississippi of the North. That's the first time I heard that. That's mm-hmm. it. His record, his record speaks for itself. Let me just say that. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I feel like, and this comes with like yeah, his whole presidency since he's been president has been, it's been interesting to say the least. There's a lot of things that he said when he was campaigning that hasn't picked up yet. So it's just like, okay, like what what's really happening? Like what's really helping the black community? And and like I said, that that's a whole conversation for a whole different day too, because we could talk about that all night. But in terms of like you like with the HBCU thing, nah, it doesn't shock me at all. Um, cutting funding, it doesn't shock me at all. But what I would say that that will kind of flip that is that we have you know people in positions of power, such as athletes, where we see them coming together more to do more support um, for HBCU, such as a Chris Paul and a lot of other people. So I don't think, I think they can make a lot of changes uh, by them coming together. Uh, but Biden thing doesn't shock me, but I think with the people that we have that support HBCUs and that growth uh, and that support continues to grow and get bigger, it it's, I feel like it'll be just probably a byproduct. Um, but I don't think to me like that, like you said, his funding, them cutting funding doesn't shock me. But I, I would want to see like how is how like what could be the domino effect of like, what's going to change because HB, there's a lot of problems within HBCUs that need to be you know changed around and affect like changes. So it's interesting to say the least. It's interesting, very interesting. Got anything you want to add, P? <laughs> PJ, like, like, like Malcolm said, I'm not surprised. I, I ain't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ain't got <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, I guess we are always the first to go. But um, yeah, on to the next question, guys. Um, so we all went to undergrads, uh, PWI undergrads. Want everybody to think? Do you feel less black for choosing a PWI or HBCU? Now, I'm going to answer this question first. <laughs> I do not feel less black. I'm gonna say that I like I'm a firm believer black people are everywhere, man. And I've met my fair share of black people at Mason. I met PJ, I met Monte at Mason, I met my fair share of black people at Mason, and I met continually more people outside of that that are black as well. And I, I definitely don't feel less black for it. I feel like when it comes to how black are you, it's based on how you you know, you interact with other black people, being that you are black, what do you say when it comes to conversations like this or any other conversation like, okay, 
You know, the famous question I was, what do you do for black people when politicians go up for voting and the re-elections and stuff like that? And, you know, it'd be black politicians and stuff like that when they ask questions like that. It's like, you know, like, how do you feel about, like, how, it's just, it's, I don't feel less black. Long story short, I don't feel less black really because I personally know who I am in the day and I don't go out here bashing black people for the decisions they make because I don't see the productivity and I really don't care about other people's lives and what they do within their lives because that's person that's not that's not my business you know what you choose to do and however you choose to do it power to you you know do you I'm gonna have my approval or disapproval of it at the end of the day but honestly I feel like those people wouldn't care if I say you're not black you know unless you know unless you know what uh who said it um what was it you know, Terrell Owens on Stephen A on first take, I doubt I care. I doubt I care. Because you know when Terrell Owens said to Stephen A, Stephen A was ready to throw a hissy fit on the show. He was he was about to he about to lose his cool. But honestly, I don't feel less black for choosing the PWI. I don't think nobody should feel less black for choosing the PWI. Like at the end of the day, like people have these reasons as to why they go to a PWI because it's the the because it's the school that's on your resume. It, it like, whatever, like, nobody should feel less, like, if anything, I feel like you, it, it gives you a chance to make that experience what you want to make it, like, because I feel like if you go to HBCU, um, if you go to HBCU, you're already coming into a whole lot of, like, a whole lot of black people like that, like, you already know what you're going to get. When you go to a PWI, sometimes it's that uncertainty of, like, okay, what is my experience going to be here, but I feel like, for example, at Mason, I feel like people like Mason's not lit, but I feel like it's what do you make at, like, how do you make your experience at Mason? Like, Mason could be lit, like, especially for a Black individual, like, the Black community is small and it's growing, it's growing, but, you know, people had to come together and make Mason, like, make that Black, make that experience, you can make, you make the experience what you want to make it as a Black student, but you don't, I don't feel, like, nobody should feel, like, less Black because, Oh, I went to a PWI. Like, no, you you went to the school that you felt that fits you. And if you don't like it, hey, you go to another school if if you want. But not not less black. I mean, being black is ain't about what you do. It's about the color of your skin. Like, you black, you black. At the end of the day, if you choose to be, if you choose to go to a PWI, that don't make you less black than you already are. I mean, at the end of the day, like Monte said, going to a school is, is about what you, what you wanted to be like, what experience you want to have. At the end of the day, not everybody wants to go to a HBCU. They want to experience something new. If you come from a black community and you want to go to UVA, you got the grades to go to UVA. That's what you want to do. That's what you should do. You shouldn't, you know, feel like you're less black for doing what it is that you want to do for your life. And like Bonte said, it's what you make it, bro. Like you can go to like like we at Mason, we we go to the BSA party. All all the stuff that they put out for black people, we do. At the end of the day, it's like. You can you make it what you want to make it, and it is, you shouldn't feel less black for not choosing HBCU because if that was the case, then most most everybody in America will probably feel like they're less black because there are a lot of black people that come from these PWIs, D1 to D3. You feel me? All the NBA players, they they feel less black because they went to Kentucky over going to Howard. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's like at the end of the day, being black is is your skin color, it's your culture. It's not what you do, you feel me? So, nah, I don't feel like you're going to make Being it. black is not, it's not about the decisions you make, it's how you represent yourself. That's put in a nutshell. Malcolm? Basically. Shit, I, I agree with everything you said, man. I, well, every, PJ, Fonte, TJ. Um, just to add on to it, uh, hell no, you shouldn't feel less black. You know, you listen to, you know, <laughs> you sit there listening to, uh, it's funny, because you think about culture, black culture, and it's funny. I find it funny. E. Franklin Frazier, matter of fact, sociologist from Howard University, um, he wrote in one of his works that uh, when black people were taken from the shores of Africa, they were stripped of their culture. Our, our ancestors were stripped of their culture. We assimilated in the white culture, and basically we are just brown, white, white Americans. It's funny, a Jewish man, Melville Herkovitz, wrote a work refuting what E. Franklin Frazier, a black man from Howard said. 
And he said, black people do have culture. I think black people, because uh, the culture shit gets thrown around a lot. What makes you black? Do you sag your pants? Do you listen to rap music? Do you play basketball? You know, simple stuff. I think we, I think as black people, because some people think all you need to do to be black is do nigga, what we what's called do nigga shit. So it's so when it comes out to a black person wanting to um, fuck go white water rafting or some shit typically associated with white behavior. You're like, oh shit, you're white. And then you have to come back into the, the black fold. I think we need to graduate beyond that understanding and understand and truly believe that black people are the model that. So hell no. That PD, PWI don't make you less black. Because guess what? Like PJ, all of y'all have touched on it. Whether you LeBron James or the homeless man, you still black at the end of the motherfucking day. Mm-hmm. Experience, like what you want the experience to be for you as a black individual. Yeah. Like, so, and then I guess I care to explain to you on this topic. I chose George Mason for the sole fact that they had the best. It was two schools that had mm, the best Florida. athletic training programs in the state of Virginia. And it was either George Mason. Bridgewater College. Or, oh, Bridgewater was in there, right? He was right. That's one of the schools. I did <laughs> yeah. go out there. I'm not going to lie. I did go yeah, out there. Yeah, you try to. <laughs> quickly, quickly declined that. That is the middle of nowhere. Could not do it. It was like a downgrade from Farmville, and Farmville is already a nowhere itself. So, Lord, <laughs> bruh. <laughs> bro, this nigga Walker. Bro, I love you. No, because you go to Bridgewater, bro. bro. PJ, you PJ. You just saw the cows in front of me at home, bro. PJ, you've been, you been, you been to Farmville. Now, look, you've been to Farmville. You've seen it. You've seen it, right? Bridgewater. I pull up on the exit. The first thing I see is a cow pasture. You tell me I'm not in the country. Come on, come on, bro. Come on, <laughs> no, that bro. welcome home smell. Yeah. <laughs> come on, bro. Come on, bro. Hey, look, I ain't gonna lie. Bridgewater overall is a good school. I really like the campus. It was just the fact that, like, I really wanted to, like, actually, like, live somewhere that I could actually, you know, constantly have something to do. Harrisonburg ain't what it all comes right up to. The, right up the road, five minutes. Yeah. <sighs> still, uh, DC is oh, great. DC is great. Anyways, it is. It it was is. those three schools. They're all PWIs, but bottom line, those are the three best athletic training programs in the state of Virginia at that time. So Howard was not up there. None of the schools, Virginia State was not, I think. And it's called the Board of Certification, because I'm kinesiology now, trying to change the majors through school. But it was I was looking for a BOC pass rate at that time. And I believe, I know James Madison was in there too. I think all those schools had above 80%. And I think... Howard and uh, VSU and Virginia Union, I think they were all below 70. So I was like, mm, I just, nah, that, that school was not the best to, you know, get the education I need to get to do what I had to do. So, you know, choose a, when you come to choosing schools, don't feel pressured to feel like people say less black. Like Vontae said, just choose a school that best fits who you are and what you're trying to do because that makes more sense at the end of the day. Um, yeah. I know, yeah, you asked, like, why you choose. Uh, I chose George Mason because it was – first it was close. Uh, I knew the surrounding area I was in, right? I'm from D.C. I kind of wanted to be close to D.C. because um, I understood I already had the connections there. I already had connections in terms of, like, my field, and I kind of wanted to maintain those and come back home. Um, and just the fact of – I wanted to go to a diverse a diverse school. Um, Mason was – Mason is diverse. Um Yes, it's a PWI, but, you know, there's a lot of different cultures and stuff like that. And that kind of something, that's just something that just stood out to me. And that was a school that showed interest in me at first. Like, they were sending me mail, like, every month, like, we want you to come here and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, well, why not? Let's apply. Let's see if I got it and I, and I end up getting in. So, it was, and then it was like, I wanted to work in sports and I knew that DC was, I didn't want to go somewhere where, like, I'm far away, far away from the city and. They don't have a sports town, but I knew D.C. was close. There's a lot of colleges um, in this area and all that. So, there's like, and then why would you – and then if I would – if someone was to ask me, like, what would you do? If I was – if what if you're debating between the HBCU and the PWI, um, that shouldn't even matter. Um, it's the question of what, what – what can these schools provide to – what can these schools do to help you and help your future and help the betterment of yourself um, so that you can fast forward and be like, the best person you can be like while you went to school, but also after school too. Cause a lot of these schools want you to be great after you graduate. And we, and we already know how that is. Like 
is having the having the right people in your circle when you graduate from these schools to help you get a job. PJ Malcolm, y'all care to tell us why you chose your PWI? I mean, I chose Mason because, I mean, number one, they accepted me first. <laughs> number two, um, <laughs> I mean, when I when I when I took when I took my campus visit, it just it just felt like some place I wanted to be. You know, I've seen a lot of diversity within the students, not just black people, but all different type of ethnicities were there. I felt like that's probably a place that you know would be a good look to be at, a valuable connection spot. Number three, I also had connections to Mason. Um, some people I know from around here, they went there and they've been <clears throat> they've been immersed in Greek life and all that stuff, telling me, you know, how fun, you know, being at Mason was, especially for a black person, which y'all can, you know, y'all can attest to. Is, is, is the, the black community there is small, but everybody knows each other, everybody has a good time. So um yeah, I mean, those are the main three reasons. And I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I went there. Uh, uh, albeit COVID kind of fucked up our last couple of years. Um <laughs> You know, be, being there was being there for you know freshman sophomore year. You meet a lot of people, um, and to find some friends that you'll have forever. So, um, I mean, I'm glad I chose Mason. I, you know, sometimes I like I said, I do wish that maybe I did choose HBCU, but you know, I have no regrets about going to um going to Mason and meeting who I met and having that experience. So that's why I chose. It. In the same, and for me, Bridgewater. I want to go to a place in the city. The same, I love that country. I love the mountains. I loved it. I loved it. Okay, you you back. I, but I, I, I like all that. I like that traffic shit. I like that congestion shit. I like that. You know, I like being in the middle, away from all the the, the, the bullshit, as I say it. But it's some people like the hustle and bustle of the city. I'm, I and I went to a place that was good for me. And then I went down to Durham, North Carolina, but it's... Uh, yeah, explain that decision. You, you, you certainly love the mountains. There ain't no mountains in Durham, North Carolina. i tell you that. But the reason I went down to Durham, my grandfather actually went to Senate, and um, they, I, I received a lot of funds to, um, to go down there. So I was like, I, don't, I, could, I could sacrifice a little bit. Okay. Look, you can't, you can't, you can't, look, I'm not going to lie. If it really came down to it, and you know, Howard Angle Schools was paying me, was giving me more than what Mason was giving me, they would have made it higher up the list. But at the end of the day, student, look, student loan forgiveness was not out in 2017. That was not popular. It wasn't. We had to, I had to think about, you know, uh, you know, what I'm paying for after school, you know, stuff like that. You got to think about that, man. Mason was offering the most bread. But while we're talking about that, while I was doing college, true story, uh, North Carolina Central was heavily recruiting me at that point in time. They were heavily recruiting me to come to that school. I'll never forget it. They were heavily recruiting me. But the only reason I did not go is because the athletic training program was poor. That was the reason. But if their athletic training program was better, I might have actually went to North Carolina Central and it would have been completely different. <laughs> it definitely would have went there. You're right about that one. You're right about that. <laughs> it would have been completely different. Trust yeah. and believe. But, you know, I don't regret it at all because I would say George Mason freshman year was probably the best year I ever had in the school year ever. That was the most fun I ever had in my life. It was so much. It was so much we did. It was hey, look, PJ was part of the group, man. PJ, I've known PJ since my freshman year in college, bro. So, man, we it's just know some some shit has I been. Experienced, did y'all experience Pilot House at Mason? Nah, oh, uh, they, closed, they, closed, they closed the year when we came. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah uh, uh, like our RAs, Able and all, Able and all that was telling like, oh yeah, y'all missed it just, bro. If y'all had came yeah. one more year early and experienced the pilot house, it would have been that much better. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that joint was lit. But um, so my next question is, so uh, I saw a TikTok on this, so this is why I thought about this question. How do you feel about non-black people attending HBCUs? I think <laughs> it's a touchy like it, yeah, that's a curveball. Hey, that's a curveball right there. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even know. Like that's such a 
with it. Like, I don't know. Like, it like on it the, like why you want to go? Like, yeah, yeah, like, that's the question why. you gotta ask though. Like, what made you like? Like, what made you want to yeah. go to you? Like, that it just throw you off. Like, Dude, y'all seen Drumline where he was like, when y'all seen Drumline where he was like, he was talking about like the white guy on the bass drum. He was talking about like, man, he was tired of all that, all that militant like white band. Stuff like that. Like I wanted, I wanted somewhere with some style. Like I, I, I love, like I love. He was, like, I love black people. This and the third. Like you gotta ask, you gotta ask white people who go to HBCU. Like HBCU is like, like why are you here? You know what I'm saying? Like if you don't yeah. get an answer like that, like I love black people. It's like the honest answer. Like that's an honest answer. Like a lot of white people try to be like, oh well, da, 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 da. like I want to go because da, 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 da. it's like nah, bro. It, I love black people. You can say that. I, I'll accept that. Like uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I, too, just admit like, I, I, I have, have culture, bro. Yeah. yeah. I, I have no problem with white people going, and it kind of like it's kind of weird when you know black people do kind of like spaz on them and be like, "Oh, you're trying to take this from us." Da, 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 da. It's like it's kind of like a good thing that a black that a white person wants to be immersed in black culture. I mean, not saying that they should go around acting like they are black because they're not, and they're not. They're never gonna go through the same things that black people go through. But I mean, like like we said, for black people attending PWIs, it's your choice. You know what I'm saying? Like it's your preference on what institution you want to attend, you feel me? So if you're a white guy and uh, HBCU accepts you and you want to go there, all power to you, bro. You're not going to see nobody that look like you, but if, you, if you're straight with that, go ahead. Like, you lo- if you love black people, you love, you know, to, to learn new things and be immersed in new cultures, that's, that's on you. I'm not going to tell you, you know, not right. to. And, I, and I think that's important, too. Like, looking at it, like, if a white person was to go to Howard, and it probably is, like, of course it is. If they say they love black people and they want to learn more about the culture, why not? Like, I think that's a good thing. Like, I don't look at it as like a down thing. Like, if they was to say some like something that's out of off the off the cliff, it's like uh, okay, like your answers. But if you say you love black people, you want to learn about the culture, and you want to literally get to see what like black people experience and, and understand like under like at least understand those experience and get those different perspectives. Like, all all power to you because I think in the long run. After you graduate, that's gonna help you as a. That's gonna help you, because now you're not you're not just living in a, in a white world. You live in in a diverse. We living in a in a diverse world. So, I feel like being immersed in that culture, it it's gonna help. If you use it as an advantage, it's gonna help you out in the long run. We always talk about when it comes to social justice, it's like of that age, we always talk about white people being our well, white allies, like people who are down with the cause or down with what we're what we're standing for. I mean. You know that I feel like that might be another way to, to you know, educate white people on the, the problems that we face. You know what I'm saying? Like if a, if a white person wants to go to an HBCU and then become more educated on social justice issues, things of that nature, what better way? What better place to, you know, put him on to what, what we what we're about than to be around black people who all think the same way? You know what I mean? Like, um, again, that's just like like I said, I don't have a problem with it as long as you're going for the right reasons, as long as you're not you know, trying to, you know, push your white agenda to black folk or whatever you're trying to do. Like, just go. If, you, if you're white and you go to HBC, just make sure you're doing it for the right reason. So you doing it because, you know, you want you want to be more educated on what black people think or what black people feel about things. Or you just you just love to be around different cultures. And whatever it is, just make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Because at the end of the day, HBC, HBCUs are HBCUs for a reason. You feel me? So... Yeah, like, hey, all power to you. Just do it for the right reason. As long as long as you are not a culture vulture, look, man. I'm sorry. I, I got like a sky has got to be sky has got to be said. You know, you know. I'm not gonna lie. At work today, I saw one of these guys wearing an NWA T-shirt. I had to ask him, did he know anything about the group? He said I, he didn't know anything about the group. He said he knew a little, little bit about him. I was like. Uh, Sorry, I was that that joy kind of that joy kind of disappoints me a little bit. Like, right. like bro, if you gonna go to the black school and you gonna wear the you know like icons in black culture, the least bitch you could do is at least know the members of the group. Please, please don't go around wearing a Tupac shirt and don't know a Tupac song. That is uh that that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. That's so embarrassing. But that's we got people who wear some, some of these graphic T-shirts. Oh, shirts and they don't even know, they don't know who they are. Crazy. I'm saying they don't even know who they are. Like I'm just saying, not even black white people. You got black people even know 
What type of yeah, shirts? That's you what I'm saying, like, bro. So it, it, that that don't even matter. It's like, okay, you if you just like the shirt, you just like the shirt, okay. But some people don't even know, so I ain't about to be like, oh, you don't know, like, at the if cool, I'm gonna just educate you on the shirt that you wearing. Like, oh, look at you, you know, you got some powerful people on your, some prominent people on your shirt, like, and I'm a, and at that point, I make it my job to educate them because they probably ain't gonna educate themselves. Yeah, that's true. That's that's, that's a different way to look at it. That's a, that's a better way to look at it. It's a better way to look at it. Yeah, I might have to do that. That's something I mean, somebody they don't know. Same thing. It's like you I'm gonna help them out. You, you like you just you just gotta make sure you do it for good attention. You know what I'm saying, like. He, he probably wore the shirt and was like, the shirt hard. You feel me? It wasn't even like a whole yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Nothing like that. Whoever, 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 whoever made that shirt didn't, didn't just make it for black people to wear. You feel me? It's like, oh no, definitely not. That's shirt, not the shirt I mean. hard. You feel me? But it'd be different if it was like a black power shirt or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah, now we got yeah, a yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we got yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like, there's got to be a reason you wear, you, you wearing a, a black power shirt and white, bro. It's like, it yeah, ain't, it, you know what I'm saying? But just, just like I, I just hope that, like I said, white people just doing, just doing it with good intention. Like, like don't be, be, be sensitive to the fact that this is HBCU for a reason. You know, you're doing this for, you got to be doing this for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, it can't just be, oh, you know, I just want to go here. Like, I feel like there's got to be more than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is your decision, but like, I feel like there's got to be good intention behind it somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I've, ne- I've never met a white person that goes to an HBCU and has had a bad intention with going or has had or has, or has just said, oh, I, I just wanted to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's always been like, oh, I want to become more educated or I want to, you know, immerse myself in, in that culture. Or maybe somebody's like, well, I came from that culture. So it's like, that's all I know. So it's like, I don't know. There's different reasons for everything. But you, you I, I feel like a lot of people get overly upset at it. And I understand why, but it's like, there's no reason to get yourself riled up because a white person wants to understand more. You feel me? And look, I honestly, when I be on TikTok and stuff, and I see it, and you know, it's not you can tell the difference between like a white person or anybody on other city that actually is like they really immersed and they really study what black people go through. You know, I actually like that, and it's like, oh, that's that's, that's nice that you actually took the time to actually immerse, study, and understand what really goes on, and let people to just try to say stuff for just a hot topic and try to get a little fame. It's two different. You you immediately you know the difference between those that educated themselves and those that said, I'm gonna say what I see on Twitter. And those that educate themselves are the best people because it just helps, it makes everything easier. Like when you have somebody that can talk to that don't look like you and understand exactly what you're going through, that's man, that's, that's 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 tough. I think it's tough. But Malcolm, you've been you've been you you got something to say. I know you do. I know you do. You've been quiet, you've been thinking about it. No, I just, <laughs> No, you got some over there. I, 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 I got a question though. Like, I know you in Durham in North Carolina. So, how's that experience been? Because I feel like North Carolina is like a developing, like a developing state where there's like a lot, especially Durham and Charlotte specifically. It's a, a place that's been like developing for like a lot of like black people in HBCU. So, bro, Durham, Durham is, bro, Durham, Durham is historically black. Like, but that, like I said, it depends on it. The funny thing about Durham. You know, in Farmville, there's a big street that goes around. It's, it's called Main Street, uh, as you can assume. And back in my grandparents used to tell me, you know, the whites used to live on this side of the street and the blacks used to live on this side of the street. You know, the greens, you know, of course, Parkview Gardens, black, but the greens, a neighborhood over Fuqua, where Fuqua is, white. I know TJ talk, know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to make a point today in Durham, literally everywhere near Duke University, yeah, gentrified, beautiful. You go motherfucking two blocks down, and the shit is like you just went into like Afghanistan or some shit. Where? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! He, he got a, he got a better a better word. Afghanistan. <laughs> All right. That was a bit. I, I don't know. I, I don't even know. Man, you can just say the hood, man. It's okay. You just say the hood. Damn. You just say. But see, the hood. It's, it's, I, see, that's the thing about it, though, because you think, man, I've seen so, I done heard, seen so much shit, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how to really say it. Um, what was my point? That I was trying to make. It was a, there was a lot of black people in Durham, um, specifically on the northwest side of Durham, where North Carolina Central is, and um, bro, it was the most black people I've come into. Con- I've dealt with white people, and just being from Farmville, white people, black people. But it was all black. 
But I think something that an HBCU does encourage you to do, because if you're in a white space, you have your blackness to rely on to set you apart from those people. You know, whether I'm sure y'all got a BSA up at um, George Mason, we did too, Black Student Union. I'm not saying that like y'all didn't know, but you couldn't just rely on your blackness for an innate, this is why I'm different. You had to do, you know, you had to do, not saying I didn't come in there already soul search, but you can understand you in a class with 20 other black, young black men, just like you, you have to search for something deeper than your blackness, which is why it kind of takes you from reality. Because when you go out into the real world, that's the first thing that's going to be seen on you. And did I answer your question, Vante? It was a lot of black people and it was definitely a culture shock because my mama went to Prince Edward High School from here and she went to Virginia State and she told me the exact same thing. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Because one of my homies, he go to UNC and I was in, he was in down in, he, in dorm, Chapel Hill, whatever. And he said like down there, it's like that, it's the developing, mm -hmm. uh, it's developing town, a lot of like black professionals and stuff like that. So I wanted to see know how it's been for you down there and stuff like that so oh yeah and don't get me wrong North Carolina but see and I think I think the thing about when we talk about HBCUs that we got to be specific on the programs that we're talking about because we know Howard Central Spelman Morehouse have produced great black doctors yeah black, black professionals but like when you start crossing disciplines like going to UNC Chapel Hill for an English is a lot different than going to a Livingston College, a small black HBCU. Experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What was the further? And there, there was another question on Vontae's question. Uh, should white people do have white people have a place at HBCUs? Or non black people. You know? Non black. I think yeah. it's, it's I, don't even, I, I don't even consider the same thing anymore. It's just either black or non black. That's the. Because they, I feel like all the sentiment is still. We sit here and think about stereotypes, Jew, stereotypes that Jews have, stereotypes that Hispanics have, stereotypes that Asians have. We, well, us as Black people, we've noticed in almost every social situation, we are in the lowest of the totem pole, except unless when we fucking running the ball into the end zone and dunking a ball into a basket. But every other social situation in this United States of America, we're on the lowest rung of the ladder. So. A non-black person, it depends. Af are they Afro-Latina? What, 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 what are their traces non, to be? Like, like non-black, like not black at all. Like oh, not not black. completely like I, because I know how ethnicity works and I know everybody and like it's some, it's some like pure white people that have like 3% black in them and stuff like that. I've heard stories like that, but like, you know, all first glance when you see that person, you immediately think they're like, okay, he's not black. Not Afro, not Afro Latino or anything like that. That's still black because that's like you still you still have the Af no, you still, you still no, have African no. in you. Like I like I can like I can tell between a full like a full blown Hispanic individual and then a full blown African individual or somebody that's Afro Af Afro Latino, as you say, I you can tell, like you can tell when somebody's mixed with with black in another culture, because I ain't like we all know that you, you can tell somebody's mixed with black. You, you can you can see it like okay. with the questions that's asked. I think well no, I don't think non white people have a place at HBCUs because black people change too much when white people or people of another race are around. I think we coddle to what other people want given our social situation in this country, but I don't think any other group of people gives a fuck about what we feel, think, or perceive. It's obvious. As far as we look at stop Asian hate, and we still got the George Floyd police bill sitting there. I didn't hear any stop all hate. Yeah, Dr. Omar did get that one. Yeah, that one. But, and this is the constant, like we constantly think in other, every time black people are speaking, it's minorities. Every time minorities, all these other uh, impoverished, well not impoverished, but all these other um, groups that aren't seen. But you hear Jews, Arabs, Hispanics talk about it. They don't worry about all them other groups. They speak for themselves. We always quick to hop on, just bring other people into the fold. Ain't nobody else as exclusive or inclusive as we are. And that's a problem. So, no. I mean, like I said, this is how I say it. Can a white person say the word nigga? Yes. Should they? Same thing with that. Yeah, you can go to that HBCU, but 
Because the thing about it, we talk about people learning. White people learn about, and, and, I, and that's just the difference in there. Because I know somebody went to Central Baseball Scholarship, got what he wanted, got the hell out. And I'm not, I don't even know. And you got to get real nefarious with it. Are you learning about my people because you care or learning about my people just because you ain't got shit else better to do? Because you know, I think that's how a lot of people look at us in this country. Oh, but what are the blacks going to turn on Fox News? Huh? I wonder what the blacks are doing today. I wonder what the blacks are up to today. Oh, let me go down to this nigga school and see what they really do, how they get down. Nah, they're too nefarious. And at the end of the day, just like if women, just as us to talk, sit here and talk about women's bodies, I don't think a white person could ever, non-black person can ever under, it even, we can even include Africans in that. We can include um, a black people with African descent from Asia. Nobody will understand, all of us, all of us right here, nobody will understand our situation with our ancestors being brought here. Because people think that shit is just, oh, huh. Not that big of a deal. It's a long time ago. <laughs> right. But the po point is, that shit set the trajectory. Why are, why are we different from every other? I mean, we can argue that the same as the Haitians who fought won their independence from uh, France. But besides that, there's no other black group like Afri you know, Africans from Kenya versus Africans from South of Afri Africa versus Africans in uh, the UK. Our position is different. And that's the reason why you know, we have non-black people. I think black people, we should be the heaviest gatekeepers of all because we do the opposite. Anybody's welcomed in the, into the fold. White boy can do a Dougie and he's invited to the damn cookout. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't never heard no other group speak like that before, but maybe that's why we're in the position we're in. I'm off my high horse. That was my soapbox. Uh, you know, I feel you. I feel you. I do, I do see it. We are probably one of the more inclusive. We're probably one of the more inclusive, you know, cultural groups out of all the groups. And don't I feel, like, I, feel like, I feel like, I feel, I do feel like as if we do take, like, we take, we, we take ownership in the opinions a lot of people have about us, and I don't understand particularly why, because, you know, sometimes I, you know, no matter what we do, no matter some, like, honestly, no matter what we do, no matter how educated we become, no matter whatever we try, some people just don't like, some people just don't like us, unfortunately. That is just, that's a tough pill to swallow. Like, some people are just full-blown racist, man, and you just gotta, just gotta, just gotta, just gotta deal with it, honestly. And you just gotta, and if you, and then, and then just forget about them. Like, I feel like, I feel like a lot of times when it comes to recording to people and stuff like that, and they're trying to get them to, you know, suffer and stuff like that. Uh, it sometimes it sometimes it works in our favor, and sometimes it just be like it just gets pushed under the rug. Like sometimes you record that person, he gets fired from his job, but you record a police officer doing it, swept under the rug. We got video evidence, but it don't matter. It don't matter. It goes away. So yeah, I I can see. I can definitely feel where you coming from. But Vonzi, you had something. No, nah, I already got no. I just think overall, like, it's interesting to get that perspective and think about it like that. Um, it's just like being Greek. Uh, you know, a lot of people have this question, like, should white people join Greek organizations? And I feel like it, everything depends on what's the reason why. Like, I'm not about to exclude nobody from joining my chapter because they're white per se do I, I i think it's really all about reason like why are you joining this organization and that and being greek is something that a lot of people hold to their heart um especially me like i i crossed in 2018 and i've seen a lot of things and heard and just hearing stories from people who've been in this who've been in this friends like damn okay and then now you know being a inclusive fraternity that we are it, it there you it's one of the it's diverse um from spanish people to white people Black, like you just get a whole, it, it's just a different side. And it's always interesting to hear people's stories and hear exactly why people join, you know, different organizations and stuff like that. So it's always an interesting dynamic. Um, what's your friend? Huh? What's your friend? Uh, Fabric Signals. Okay. I'm asking like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sitting there asking like, what's your set? Like, no. Nah, I've been. <laughs> <laughs> so the people will be asking me that like, they see my chain, they see my wristband, they're like, what you in again? Like, yeah, yeah. 
uh, I'm, I'm in a fraternity. What? I was like, okay, okay. So yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting as it's interesting as a whole. Like when we start talking about like our space, like what's our space, and and you know allowing people to be in it. it is this the real interesting? I think your perspective was interesting as well. I never really thought about it like that, but like you said, like we are one of the people who we allow anybody. We allow anybody. Yeah, like I ain't gonna count. We be on Twitter, like, oh yeah, that boy, he he invited to the cookout. He did the duggy, he did all that. So it's it's interesting. It's, it's but when you have those conversations, it's it's definitely yeah. interesting. People make us feel the worst yeah. about it. They make us feel the worst about it. Like, bro, we like it. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. I have not seen a Jewish activist, Hispanic activist, whatever. But when we start saying, "Yo, we're gatekeeping this. This is ours." It becomes a problem. Oh, those black are racist. God, what are they doing? What, what, you, you think about your history, y'all. Y'all should let that exactly. That's but the they don't point. Say of- that, the they don't say that about no, no, uh, nobody else caught your butt ours, and that's the crazy part about it too. Yes. I just thought about that. I just think like <laughs> we. Nah, we no point, Malcolm. Um, yeah, I definitely feel you, and I understand you. But the final question I have is. What would you tell people that are debating between an HBCU and a PWI? Now, I know we've answered this question pretty much throughout the whole thing, but if you had one piece of advice to give, what would it be? And my piece of advice would be choose a school that's best for you, choose a school that's going to put you on track for your career, and choose a school that's going to not have you in debt the most because you got to pay it back eventually, bro, so... Same sentiment. I feel like that's the same sentiment across the board for all of us. <laughs> it's the same sentiment. Like, like I'm, it's the same sentiment across the board. Like, you choose what's best for you. Don't don't let other people influence your decision at school, and do what's and do what's best for you at the end of the day. Like, if you don't like where you at, like your freshman freshman year, you always got the right to transfer and find something and maybe something better out there for you. But choose what's best for you at the end of the day, and don't let nobody don't let nobody force you to go to a school. Please, you your decision, you please. Stand strong in what you do, man. Stand strong in what you do. At the end of the day, when it looks back at it, people are not going to look at GMU, Howard, BSU, Bridgewater, ODU. When you apply for that job, ain't nobody going to care what them three letters stand for. They not. Look at that. <laughs> you right about that. They not going to care. Yeah, like I tell people, people, it's not about it's – a, it's about the experience you get while you at college and then who you know. Exactly. Those two exactly. things. If you master those two things along with the skills, you'll be safe. Look, hey, look, honestly, I'm in the process of interviewing for personal training positions, and I went to one of these gyms. It was a black. It was a black lady that owned the gym, and she ran it. And I put my life savings on it. She did not care if I went to North Carolina Central or Howard. That wouldn't. That wouldn't have made me. Oh yeah. He's gonna definitely get the job because if I didn't know what I was doing, I definitely was not gonna get that job no matter what school I went to at the end of the day. But nonetheless, guys, that is sums it up for the first episode of season three. We kicked it off, did our thing, power, you know, interesting, fun topic. And but next episode, we're gonna take a turn on things. We're gonna get a little, a little deeper into things here. You know, Malcolm was talking about the N word earlier, and the next episode we do have is the use of the N word. Definitely had to get there because that is something that we gotta get on. Because some reason a certain group of individuals feel compelled to say this word, and we have to show them why this is not why we cannot say this word, bro. It's, it's, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. And I definitely did my studying, so this gonna be. I'm gonna pull it from. I'm, I'm gonna pull it from all groups, and we 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 really gonna get into this. But um, you know, next time that word is used against me in a bad way, Tupac said it best: "Never ignorant and getting goals accomplished." There you go. Never ignorant and getting goals accomplished. Tupac's debut album. So next time somebody calls me that, that's my response, and I'm gonna go away from it like that. But. Nonetheless, that's all I got for y'all today. Vontae, PJ, Malcolm, got anything for me? Dip. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, guys. Good, one. Stay tuned, bro. Good conversation. Yep, it's yeah. getting better. But hey, it's just this the start of season three. Hopefully, this season is going to be better than the last. Let's continue to get better from here. Um, other news. Um, so, you know, we have Music Central now, guys. This is a whole new thing. 
we're going to talk about music. You know, we did it in the music series. We did that. But now we have a whole segment towards Music Central. Albums, artist breakdowns, the whole nine, man. You know, we really going to get in with that. And I'm going to try to make the podcast even more expansive. And we're going to keep growing and growing and growing, you know. I Am Athlete does it best. They got, like, four different shows in, like, one podcast. So, you know. That's 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 that that's something I want to do, but you know that's all I got for y'all. As always, this is your host Irish signing off, and see y'all soon.